Metex for joining us, the viewers. This is our special edition from our member broadcasting at Oko being home of Africa's English program. I will go on the move by producing and hosting this program for you. Have a beautiful time with us. Today I have uh, one guest from Doom meeting from the Netherlands. Her name is Mahalit. Mahalit, thank you for joining us and welcome to this program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, just to begin with, who is Mahalit? Uh, Mahlid is uh, with a background in African studies uh, and uh, he, she's just an independent Pan-African researcher. As Pan-Africanism has been initiated to bring African solidarity ever since the era of the slave trade, but the movement is still passive. Why that is not an active uh, as it was on early days? What is your reflection upon this point? You know, I think it's b before answering why it's passive, uh, why it's not active like it was in the beginning. It's better to look at uh, a little bit, to give a little bit of historical background. You know, the Pan-Africanism movement started in the U.S. by, uh, I mean, outside of Africa, uh, by non-Africans, but African descendants, actually, uh, in, the, in the 80s, uh, to name one who is famous behind this movement is the W.E. Dubois or William Edward Dubois. Uh, then uh, when the, those African descendants were busy with other things, you know, it, it, they were having uh, different uh, um, meetings and conferences in Europe. But after that, it was in the 1940s who took over uh, this movement, uh, the Ghana Kwame Nkrumah. Uh, and, uh, you know, it has a different, the movement has different shapes. It has a, a political shape, it has a cultural shape, and uh, it has also a, an economical shape, meaning, you know, to make Africa independent uh, uh, economically. After that, from the 1940s, you know, together with other African leaders, uh, in, in uh, this movement, you know, has uh, led to the birth of uh, the Organization of African Unity in the 1963, uh, and then in 2002, the African Union. So the African Union is right now the biggest Pan-African institution that the continent uh, has. And, you know, ever since this, its uh, conception, uh, it has, uh, you know, to name a few, two great initiatives have come out of it, like the Agenda 2063, just to name the recent one, and then the African uh, uh, Continental Free Trade uh, Area. Now, to answer your questions, why it's passive, why it wasn't active, I think I will uh, I will explain this in the uh, in the expression of um, uh, uh, Her, Her Excellency Dr. Arikana Chombori uh, Kwao, you know, who sees it as you know, it's to, it's better to see Africa as uh, as a tree. So the tree has different parts. There's a stem and there is a um, I mean there's a root beneath the, the surface that we don't see, and then there's a stem, there's a stem, and then there's a, its leaves and its fruits. So what are the root causes that lead to, uh, you know, Africa in a way that why it's not working the way we are expecting it to work is it's good to look at the root causes. One being, uh, you know, the colonization. Uh, and then secondly, we have, uh, you know, the, before even colonization, there is the mind colonization through missionaries, you know, through slave trade. And then the European came and colonized uh, the country uh, and then we have uh, meaning you know after the scramble Africa is a German uh, the Berlin conference in 1884 and then we have the international uh, uh, trade uh, policy basically you know which puts uh, countries small countries like uh, Djibouti or Lesotho in the same uh, trade policy like the big giant countries uh, uh, like China or US uh, you know any Asian country or any or European countries who are economically uh, strong. So, uh, and then uh, we, if we go down uh, down the list, also there's a brain drainage. You know, there are uh, many educated people uh, outside of Africa 
uh, than uh, than inside the continent. So these are the root causes that you know often forgotten that people don't see why you know in a way if you know if maybe if we want to say okay like Africa is a tree but maybe the fruits are you know some of the tr the fruits are not good as we wanted it to be, uh, and then uh, the things that we see is uh, above is. Uh, because of uh, these problems is we have um, corruption, we have uh, better, the lack of better education, there is a lack of uh, better, there is a lack of uh, a better health uh, insurance in the country, in the continent. Uh, all, this, uh, all these things are the result of uh, uh, those things, but uh, can we give up? Uh, can we give up on the African Union? No. This is uh, we simply, as an African citizen, we cannot afford to give up uh, on this institution, and we should work. Uh, we sh we should make it work for the, for its citizens, and this is really mainly by decolonizing uh, the mind that has been colonized and also uh, by uh, you know assuring uh, Africa its economic independence. Uh, by getting the economic independence of the continent. Yeah. Why the non-African citizens or why the Western, even especially the Western, why they always want to uh, against the uh, Pan-African movement? Well, uh, uh, the Africa, we have to know that the uh, Africa is working i mean whether it's individually member states or as an institution they are working uh, together with uh, different partners this can be with the european union uh, with the us uh, or also uh, yeah with uh, with asia they have different partnership uh, programs but uh, what do we mean again this pan african movement you know essentially it means that it's a uh, it's total independence in economy, you know? What does this mean this to the West? I mean, apparently the West uh, wants to remain in control of the economy uh, in the world. So will it allow uh, this Pan-African movement, which actually is all about uh, Africans' uh, total independent uh, economic empowerment, economic independence uh, in the world? Um, no, this is like an alert for them. So what they do is actually, you know, Africa is essentially, as we know, it's uh, the biggest, uh, it's a continent with the largest uh, natural resources, meaning be it, for example, in arable uh, land, oil or water, um, also minerals like diamond, um, gold, copper, platinum, you know, name it all all those natural resources by the way all uh, both renewable and re non-renewable natural resources are largely largely found in this continent so uh will will uh, will they allow it this uh, will, will they allow the continent to be independent economically um, no, this is why we have also, uh, you know, uh, Western, the West Africa, for example, who were colonized by France, uh, they are, okay, independent, so to speak, by paper um, for more than 50 years ago, but uh, France is still meddling in the business of those Western African countries and their money is uh, kept uh, in, in France. We know what's going on. So uh, that is the, the main problem that the West, uh, you know, uh, being uh, 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 the, the West uh, needs always, uh, they need to be in control of uh, the economy. But Africa, what it needs is actually, you know, uh, a nationalist uh, government that's committed and you know uh, works for total in independence of uh, its economy use its natural resources uh, for uh, not uh, not to sell uh, uh, the natural resources or the raw materials only outside of africa but also to benefit uh, its own uh, citizens in the country or uh, in the continent um, yeah this is uh, as far as why why they are against uh, that movement because the movement is uh, it's all about total economic independence 
Well, uh, why the Africans lack the unity on cooperating and working for the solidarity of their continent? You know, Africa is, it's a, uh, it's a continent with uh, 54 member countries and to bring, to get uh, the agreement uh, of, or, you know, to get that, to, to tap that common interest of all those uh, countries uh, is difficult. So it's all about, you know, finding that umbrella, you know, that that protection that works for all the 50, oh no, now actually it's 55, yeah? So it's for the 55 member countries. So if we ask that, what is that protection? What is that solidarity that can bring them together is the Pan-Africanism movement, I mean, they all agree on this but again uh you know to really uh then you talk about you cannot bring overnight uh, all of them together or you know for all or expect for all of them to have the same interest uh so initiatives you know is this happens gradually like initiatives uh, the african uh, continental free trade area is uh, one of it so what happens in this is yes countries would like to exchange uh, uh, trade between uh, two countries, you know, the West from the East. Uh, for example, take, let's say that uh, uh, Nigeria or Ghana uh, wants to sell, or Ghana wants to sell its share better uh, to Kenya, then, uh, then along with it, there are things that needs to be uh, improved, meaning there should be a free movement, uh, meaning that, that also which materi materializes the African Union passport that will allow citizens to move freely. Uh, so when Kenya figures out also to to sell its tea, let's say, to Ghana, and Ghana wants to sell its share better uh, to Kenya, then they will start to work out on the free movement uh, and also, you know, um, removing unnecessary tax tariffs uh, and other things, and also to work on their own uh, their own currency instead of. Uh, uh, using uh, foreign currencies like uh, US dollars or uh, euro. So they will come up with something that works for the, Ga the Ghanaian currency and also for the Kenyan shilling. These are the things, you know, this is the great thing about the African uh, uh, continental free trade area. So uh, slowly, uh, but surely it, it will happen, but it will take time. Then, you know, there is, there is this, uh, uh, finding an umbrella which they have the pan-africanism uh, and also no, now then it becomes down to the convergence the conver convergence of uh, interest yeah so uh, slowly but surely uh, it will get there well what is exp expected from the government of ethiopia and all african states especially in reconnecting the state of africa together for their common development, for their common destiny and prosperity. What is expected from the governments of different states of Africa? Especially, uh, for example, uh, last year Ethiopia allowed a free visa for all travelers who want to come and visit Ethiopia. What is expected? The, well, the, what's expected is not only Ethiopia, also I think first it was Rwanda and there are other few countries who allowed it, but others also should trust and, you know, start to implement what is uh, what has been uh, declared by the African Union to work on towards this. Yes, some of them have security issues and, you know, like, for example, the, the South Africa and others, but they should follow a step, you know, it's really uh, commendable for Ethiopia as being the capital of Africa and having, you know, the African Union uh, uh, in, in its capital to allow a, a free visa movement for the African citizens, uh, but also others uh, should follow and, you know, start to implement what they have signed and ratified in the African Union. It just simply asks, uh, it just simply it requires, you know, the the commitment of the leaders, you know, to work for the betterment of uh, uh, their people, the, their citizens, and they will, you know, once you allow that, they will see that actually, uh, uh, the uh, we have seen the result of uh, the the southern Africa, you know, between uh, the, there there are these wrecks, the regional economic operations in Africa. So SADC, I mean, the Southern African Development. Uh, the community, let's say, I'm not sure what, what, what C stands for, but they have this 
free movement and uh, uh, that once they allowed that they have seen that you know actually most of the people did not really uh, immigrate as it was feared to south africa so they simply have to have to take uh, action and you know uh, and, and implement it that's all uh, it requires and also when there is for example like the great ethiopian renaissance dam uh, for the eastern africa or this is for the right parian state because it also includes uh, the downstream countries up north so they have to uh, bring they have to come and you know have one voice uh, for example ethiopia has gone through a lot while building the while building guard and uh, still the negotiation is uh, going on and still ethiopia is you know leading uh, or uh, that principle bringing bringing that pan african spirit of uh, african uh, solution to african problems and uh, they all need to champion what they have signed for this is you know ethiopia has been in the forefront uh, in uh, establishing the organization of african unity 56 years ago and still now championing that principle so they need to have when you all the, we know that the neighboring countries are going to reap the fruit of and even the downstream countries who, who seems now opponent or against uh, the building of the guard uh, are going to benefit out of this but they need to come and say you know actually we need this in our region we need this this cooperation this is all for the development of the region and we need to support it's not like siding to it. they need to start you know to voice out for what is working for their citizen, just because you know they think that their relation uh, might be uh, kind of I don't know disrupted with other downstream countries, they should keep silent. No, it's all about the citizens, and so they have to start to voice and uh, take action uh, for what is uh, uh, for what is good for their own uh, people. What is the best way out for African, all the African people, in what ways, which means in what ways they stand by the side of one another and cooperate for uh, strong solidarity of uh, one continent, Africa? Yeah, these are the ways. This is why I bring the, the example, the, uh, the uh, Great Ethiopian uh, Renaissance Dam. These are the ways to 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 work for when there is a, a regional uh, co there's a program that benefits or initiative or a project a development project that benefits the region that creates partnerships this is what the agenda 2063 one of the pillar of agenda 2063 is actually to create a partnership amongst member states and this is a great example i'm just talking about the great ethiopian renaissance stamp there but there could be also other projects that that needs to be cooperated but this is like a living uh, examples that we are seeing so uh, this kind of programs have to be uh, encouraged and uh, you know uh, uh, be supported by uh, the region or uh, you know even the african union itself all along until now the african union is you know like okay they are uh, still uh, chairing the negotiation but they have to voice for what needs to be voiced uh, and also is uh, the african uh, the Af africans should work you know the international uh, trade policy you know which has a lot of uh, barrier uh, to to as it's uh, as insane as uh, it sounds uh, the western world will not allow africa you know to be strong in economy you know to be food uh, self-sufficient to have uh, a lot of manufacturing uh, factories or or uh, in or industry in in their country <clears throat> so what they have to do is they have to be a common voice for the today it could be ethiopia or it could be kenya <clears throat> or it could be any other country but tomorrow each of them will face uh, will come up to face this you know uh, policies that set by the so-called international organizations like IMF, uh, WTO, uh, and others, to name a few, that have barriers or uh, you know blockages uh, that uh, that kind of blocks 
countries from the, uh, from developed uh, from having industrial uh, industrial uh, manufacturing uh, companies in their country so yeah they have to come in one voice you know there are small countries and weak in economy unless they unite they cannot confront you know the giant countries uh, or the western world who is uh, controlling the economy the continent had been and still being manipulated by the foreign forces through their interference or indirect role what is your insight on such claims well we it's obvious that we uh, we see still there are you know colonizers who are uh, who have been uh, the european colonizers uh, who were uh, in africa also they you know africa has got its independence in the mainly in the 19, in the 18 in the 1950s and 1960s but they didn't really left africa they are still there there is a system that they have put in place is there and still you know you you will see member states uh, instead of when when they have a problem uh, take western africa for example if the, when there's a problem or a conflict uh, in the continent it's not the african union troop that goes to uh, take mali i mean uh, or any country in the western africa that goes to that place it's not the african union it's france who really sends its air force first and you know bring its military and also their economy um when they have something it's like still they are they are colonizers so uh yes they are, they are meddling in the business of uh, african countries uh, and also you can see the other example is uh, look at again and again i keep on bringing this example of uh, gerd you know the main problem that you know we have with the downstream country namely egypt is that because egypt sticks to that colonial treaty that it has uh, in the presence of uh, UK at that time. So uh, it exists uh, and we have to wake up, uh, the African member states have to wake up to the reality and uh, uh, remove you know, those uh, vested interests of uh, the colonizers and really truly to be uh, independent because so far, uh, they are not independent. The African Union is one of the African organs that were coined to entertain African affairs and domestic affairs of the Africa. But some people claim that it is powerless, which means the African Union. And others say it is a supervisory body for the continent's interests. What is your overall reflection on this point? Well, the AU is, you know, yes, it's one of the biggest Pan-African organizations uh, that we have. And uh, it's uh, we cannot say, we cannot say that you know it's not totally uh, not working. Yes, it has no power because mainly we keep on comparing it with the European Union. And you know the European Union has a power to say to its member states, the African Union, the way it's uh, created uh, is not like that. You know, member states individually have actually. Uh, power over the union so this has to change unless this changes we will not see a strong uh, african union uh, uh, there are countries you know who have uh, conflict or any other problem uh, see for example i mean why we go to a next country ethiopia is facing currently an internet i mean an immense really international pressure and which is all unfair really but uh, uh, did the african union come forward and say anything no so this is why we need the african union you know to come this and this is exactly where people say i understand it's you know that lion uh, who has no power with or a toothless power it's true, but we have to change this institution in a way that, you know, it gives protection for its member states and, you know, speak as one voice uh, for uh, when countries, their businesses, uh, or where they, when their affairs is, uh, you know, interfered by a non-African state, you know, outside Africa, 
just like what Ethiopia is, uh, you know, having now, you know, the, the, the non-African states, uh, namely U.S. is telling uh, or EU also following the footsteps of U.S. telling to do uh, things uh, in Ethiopia. You know, Ethiopia is a sovereign country, uh, but Ethiopia is fighting this fight alone. Uh, we expect a lot uh, from uh, the African Union, but that didn't happen. So yeah, we the, the structure of the African Union has to be changed in a way. You know, it will voice uh, and reflect the interest of uh, uh, member states. And uh, unless we have that, we cannot uh, uh, we cannot uh, you know uh, have that big voice that can confront uh, uh, the bigger powers or the Western world. Well, what is expected from the member countries in making the African Union more stronger than ever? Well, they have to, you know, they have to start. Uh, uh, I would like to bring here when the African Union, you know, this Pan-Africanism movement started before the establishment of the Organization of African Union. There were, you know, two groups, uh, one led by um, Kwame Nkrumah, uh, the other one uh, was by uh, Julius Nyerere of, uh, uh, of Tanzania. So uh, while Kwame Nkrumah's uh, idea was to really, to be, his motto was unite or perish, you know, for the Africa to be united, to, to create that united states of Africa. Uh, but the others were saying, uh, no, we should do this slowly, you know, region by region, Eastern Africa, West Africa, the South, the Central, like this, that, that's what they wanted. Uh, practically, maybe this seems doable, but when you see it now, you see exactly why Kwame Nkrumah was uh, sticking to that, you know, Africa has to unite now. So because of that lack of, uh, uh, unity. Uh, this is uh, what we have right now because he was afraid that was this, you know, little, little independent countries in the continent have, be, you know, they are sovereign countries and they become comfortable uh, under their uh, sovereignty. So it will later be, it, it later it will be difficult for Africa to unite because, you know, there will be his, uh, his assumption or, or his prediction was that the leaders will be afraid to come out of their comfort zone because, you know, they have these sovereign states that are governing, you know, why do I want to uh, uh, unite and then lose uh, uh, this territory or this world which was uh, under control uh, of uh, that specific uh, country or leader. So uh, this is exactly what we have. They, uh, what they have to do to come back to your question, they should uh, give power to the uh, more power to the African Union and uh, and unite and have one voice uh, and work uh, for the betterment of uh, citizens. Uh, yeah, that's what I can say. How do you recognize the role of Ethiopia? That the role that Ethiopia has been played in unifying the African unity and in solidifying the Africans, uh, starting from the ever started from the. Uh, foundation of the African Union till these days, which means in championing the African problems for the African solution in connection with the Grand Ethiopia Renaissance Dam in others. How do you recognize the role of Ethiopia? Ethiopia has been consistent in championing Pan-Africanism. It was there in the forefront when uh, Emperor Haile Selassie was there in the forefront when the Organization of African Unity was established. It was there uh, in helping African leaders who were uh, uh, who were uh, colonized, like uh, Ethiopia helped Nelson Mandela in their struggle against apartheid. Ethiopia helped uh, Mugabe in their also struggle against their uh, colonizer. So Ethiopia has been in the forefront, and uh, also when after after its uh, the organization of African Unity changed to African Union, Ethiopia is still championing that principle of the African uh, solution to African problems. And the GERD is really a big example for this. When, you know, the African Union was not even uh, believing in itself uh, that it would solve such problems. And while it was standing by the corner where all these uh, 
uh, three countries uh, uh, you know, trying to solve uh, their conflict, namely Ethiopia, Sudan, uh, Egypt, mainly Ethiopia and Egypt. Actually, it's uh, Sudan uh, recently joined the club of Egypt. So uh, it, they all are, uh, you know, in Africa, uh, they uh, geographically, and also the AU has actually the mandate to solve this problem. The AU has uh, the political capacity and the AU has also the will in the countries. The countries have the will, meaning, for example, Ethiopia. It was, if we remember, it was in the uh, June or May 2020 that Ethiopia brought it, the issue to the African Union. It was in the interest of Egypt. Uh, when Egypt took the matter in, in, in the end of 2019, around October, which actually stayed for six months until February uh, to US, uh, and then that was uh, uh, Ethiopia worked out because uh, US, uh, US approach was uh, biased and uh, clearly siding uh, by Egypt, uh, standing by Egypt's side. So when Ethiopia left, First, they have an agreement of, you know, in 2015, uh, where under the Declaration of Principles to solve their problem within the trilateral uh, members, me meaning within the three countries, without any country meddling in their business. But that didn't happen. It's breached by Egypt. So it was the matter was taken to US. Then that that was not uh, also a solution. So Ethiopia said, if any fourth party have to be uh, involved in in this negotiation, then it 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 has to be the African Union. So what the Prime Minister uh, Abi did was to approach uh, the then Chairman of uh, the Union, the South African President President Ramaphosa. This is really commendable for Ethiopia, and uh, yeah, it, it's something that again proved Ethiopia will always stand by that principle, will always champion the Pan-Africanism values. And uh, that's what it did. So the matter came to uh, to the African Union. So why I said when the African Union was, you know, even quiet and, you know, just standing aside by the corner, you know, not trying to solve anything. So Ethiopia really brought it to the forefront and, you know, AU has a mandate and the capacity to do so you have to be the one to you know who who can uh, who, who should lead this negotiation not any other uh, state who is a non african uh, state so ethiopia yeah truly uh, has been championing and uh, uh, it did really uh, i always say this ethiopia kind of you know uh, carried that burden you know uh, of uh, uh, solving uh, this kind of conflicts, you know, water conflicts uh, uh, are, I believe, uh, for the, are, are, no, they are really rare, even not only in Africa, but internationally. So it gave the African Union, uh, Union that experience of, you know, when such conflicts will arise again, how it's going to be solved. And also it gave the African Union that power of, you know, uh that others cannot meddle in the business of uh, africa that it should be the african union so i really like although it was you know the the, the road was really problematic for ethiopia but i um, as an ethiopian you know uh, i am happy that ethiopia took that leadership that kind of paves the way for other African countries. You know, uh, many riparian states, you know, who are kind of silent now. Uh, it could be, you know, today is Ethiopia, but tomorrow any riparian state might want to build uh, to build uh, like a hydroelectric uh, dam, just like what Ethiopia did. But Ethiopia, you know paved the way for them showing how it should be done so uh, yeah ethiopia did champion and it was consistent in valuing uh, the pan-africanism uh, principles and values well uh, in your conclusion what should be the future way what should be the best way for all african and uh, africans for the future you know first we have to decolonize the mind we have to, you know a lot has been done through uh, the missionaries that came to africa uh, the slave trade 
I mean, African history for the record did not start did not start with the slave trade, as many think, and as you know, many education here in Europe uh, has it. At Africa was a civilized continent be before any other continent in the world. Uh, it was a kingdom. So first of all, we have to change that mindset of our citizens that you know the Europeans. Uh, came or you know the, the, the or the white world. I think I, I have to put it in in black and white because it's all about that. That made it you know all you know everything about Africa is not good, bad, inferior, and everything what is Western or white is uh, desirable and glittery. So now what happened is our our, our citizens our citizens are chasing that so there's a lot of immigration mi migration from uh, from the south to north so we have to change that we have to change that and make make it uh, reverse we also have to work on uh, the diaspora you know economically uh, economical independence is really important and this is why i really like the, the initiative of the African continental free trade area because it will slowly kind of force the countries, you know, to to implement that will lead us to the African unity. So uh, they have to also incorporate the African diaspora. You know, the African diaspora uh, have this money in foreign currency that the continent needs for now. So uh, imagine there are more than um, in hundreds of millions of African diaspora outside Africa. So just imagine, you know, uh, all those people start to put uh, $50 or I don't know, 50 euro per month aside. Per month, do you know like how much money that can, that can be and also engage them in, in, in business? Uh, these kind of things have to be done. Yeah, decolonizing the mind of the people is really important and also to uh, to engage the african diaspora uh, and uh, for africa to have one voice they should not live when country one country has a problem one member state one member state has a problem uh, should that that member state should not be left alone to face the rest of the world by itself like what ethiopia is now uh, you know this is exactly Perfect, per Ethiopia's situation perfectly suits this now. So it, it's, there should be a, a voice from the African Union. Uh, and uh, uh, once we do that, once we have that one voice, then the rest of the world will start uh, to respect us and to listen to us. Uh, but unless that happens, uh, if we leave, uh, you know, the same room where a, a small country, Djibouti, has to uh, has to face uh, a giant country like China uh, or I don't know Malaysia, uh, then this this will not help us. This will not take us uh, anywhere. We have to unite. We have to have one voice and decolonize the mind uh, and yeah, engage the African diaspora. A pan African smallet from the Netherlands. I really appreciate it for your ideas, your knowledge and experiences. Thank you very much for joining us again. Thank you for having me. Devos, this will bring us to the end of this edition. Many thanks for joining us and for your time. Till the next edition, have a beautiful time.